Hi ho everybody, me again, Earthy Wise Woman. How are you doing? The reason I'm, uh, that's my dog, and the reason I'm here tonight is because I'm going to dress this candle. This is an African Powers candle, and on it are the names of seven African, uh, uh, I would call them Orisha, is the proper name. And there's seven of them on here. Now, I know these look like Catholic saints. And I want you to take a look at that. They do look like the Catholic saints. Now, the reason why they look like that, it's part of the tradition of voodoo hoodoo. Now, I don't consider myself a hardcore voodoo practicer, but I do acknowledge the faith of voodoo because I am African American. And I do uh, feel a kindred to the African Orisha. I have altars to them, and I do um, pray to them through my ancestors. So this is a seven, uh, as you can see, I'm showing the candle. We call it the seven African powers candle. Catholic uh, candles also exist like this with Catholicism. But now uh, we used to use those, um, but now we have these, which I prefer. Now behind me right now, some of the uh, the Orisha that you saw on that candle is here, but as you notice, they look like what uh, they're perceived as in Voodoo and Hoodoo. Right here, this is Chango. Now, uh, Chango is he is the uh, Orisha for uh, traveling and uh, such as that. Alega, he's there, Wisdom, and uh, Oya, she's in the back right there. She is the goddess of change and, well, because of storms and weather, but she's the goddess of change or the Orisha of change. And Obadala, he is the father of all of the Orisha. That's him right there. I have another one in my bedroom that's uh, Oshun. She is the goddess of beauty and the rivers and sweet water as such as that. But this one, this all of them are on this candle and a few more that I don't have in my statuary. So I'm taking this candle over to my altar, which is really very busy because I, I make candles and I make... Uh, as you can see, I hope you can see anyway because it's kind of dark. I make a lot of... Uh, dolls and I sell them on Etsy but that's another story so I'm gonna put this candle down here I want you to see that see that and put that up there now what I usually tell people is that chopsticks are a practitioner's best friend because I'm gonna dress this candle I've already let me just do a little bit more because I, I didn't show you guys what I did so I want you to see this right here Oh, I hope this is not too dark. There we go. Now, what you're looking at is uh, sage. And I picked it myself in the mountains about three or four, two or three months ago. It's like in July. So last month I, I picked this. And I'm going to go ahead and light this, as you can see. So it's kind of smoking up a little. There we go. Now, the sage that I'm burning right now, this is blue sage. It's native to California, which is where I live. Um, you can special order this kind of stuff. I don't, I'm not giving out websites or nothing. I just know you can. But for me, I just go up into my local mountains and I pick some for myself. And um, I bring it home and I dry it. And it doesn't take too, too long to dry. That's why the leaves are so narrow on this one. Because it's not um, the sage. Woo, took off real good. It's not the sage that you usually see in a lot of stores. So I'm taking the sage, and it's smoking up, and it's getting really hot. And I'm going to pick up my seven African powers candle. And I'm going to say these words. Of the mundane world, I cleanse away from this candle. And I prepare this candle right now for sacred use. And I call upon the elements of air, fire, water, and earth. Thank you. Elements, please come and cleanse this candle. 
and anoint it as my will. So mote it be. I'm going to put the candle down right here. Okay. Now, the reason I'm lighting this seven African powers candle, it's not for power. Usually, the seven African powers candle is used when people that we know and love are ourselves are going on journeys like we're traveling and we just want to make sure we're safe and we're protected and that our journey will be um, successful and that good things will happen and nothing bad so like i was saying a chopstick is a practitioner's best friend so i'm going to take this chopstick and i'm going to push down very hard and poke holes in the candle and you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, she's poking a hole in her candle. Not literally, I'm just poking it. Let me put it over here, away from my altar, so that I can kind of show you what I'm doing. I'm holding a phone and poking a candle. Let me put this on my desk so I can give you some better lighting. There we go. So you can see there's one hole. But I usually do four. So here we go. One there and poke here. There we go. And I'm sure you're wondering, well, why is she poking holes in her candle? Ah, there we go. The reason I'm poking holes in this candle is so that I can properly dress it. So I'm going to poke some more holes in it so I can dress the candle really well. There we go. Poking holes in the candle. There we go. I'm going to try to do one more hole. Actually, I'm, I'm going to make this one a little deeper. How about we do that? There we go. That's going in really well. Now, this kind of candle is usually paraffin wax. And this is a jar candle, as you can see, which is one of the reasons why I'm dressing it like I am. If this was a taper candle that's not in glass like this is, I would probably be dressing it from the bottom. But this is called... A loaded candle. When you do it like this, the way I'm doing it, it's loaded. Some people call it a psycho candle. Both terms are used, but in a jar, it's a loaded candle. I'm going to pull this out, and that's it. Now, before I went on candle uh, on a camera with you guys, I went ahead and I mixed a, a blend of herbs that we're going to use on this candle. Right now, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to bring it over.